Running an ultramarathon can be extremely brutal, but having a well-stocked drop bag can really help with this. So let's talk about a few things that you might want to put in it. So the first thing to put in there is some spare running clothes. Things like new boxers, maybe some leggings or some base layers, they'll be really helpful. Also, shorts, different pairs of shorts, you never know, you might tear some on the way, you just don't know what's gonna happen. Spare socks are going to be absolutely key. And then also get some running tops in there. You might want some short sleeve ones like this, um, something that's a bit breathable, or maybe one that's not breathable that's sh short sleeve, uh, or a long sleeve top in case you're getting cold, anything like that. Think about all the options, all the options of weather that you could get and make sure you're sort of prepared. Because when you're in there and the climate's changed, you can then make a really good decision as to what you put on next. Also make sure in your spare running clothes there's also some shoes as well. You might get fed up with the shoes you're wearing or need something for slightly different terrain or grip so having another pair of shoes can be really helpful. To make changing slightly easier stick a towel in there. I usually like to stick two in. I use this one for sort of like face, arms, legs and then I use this one for feet and yeah the other bits you know what I mean. Uh, yeah so towels can be really helpful just if you're going in and you're soaking wet but it's sort of dried up within the sort of like last half an hour and you get to your drop bag you might want to put dry clothes on so you don't want to put them on absolutely sopping wet a towel is really going to help. The next thing is some Ziploc bags mine is conveniently holding my foil blanket at the moment but these are super handy if you do get to an aid station and your bag drop is there and you want to change your socks maybe your bag drop is going to crop up two or three times in the race so you don't want to just stick your soaking wet socks in the bag with all your fresh clothes so ziploc bags can make sure that everything is separated you can put all the stuff you don't want in the ziploc bag throw it straight back in your drop bag and it's not going to get all your nice fresh clothes wet the next thing is wet wipes. These are really, really helpful. If the course is sandy or gritty or you get any mud on you, when you change into fresh clothes, you don't really want to carry that straight into the new clothes. You don't want to put sandy feet into fresh socks. So having some wet wipes to clean off can be really helpful. You can also get really salty skin when you run. So wiping all this off before you put on fresh clothes is really nice. Fresh batteries and a power bank and don't forget the cables. That's really key. So you might want to charge your watch if you're going for hours or you might want to charge your phone in case you need it your head torch might need new batteries you just don't know so having all of these options in there is really good one thing to make sure you do is don't put your power bank in but forget the cable that's super important i've done that before and it's painful Next is an extra water bottle. This can be really helpful. I just sprayed water down my leg. Uh, yeah, so this is really, really good because you might want to put fresh water in here. You may put electrolytes in the water that you're carrying and you might get a bit sick of it. So just having some plain water there can be really helpful. The other thing is maybe to put in some extra soft bottles as well or a hydration tube. So the soft bottles can sometimes break or leak. You might try and overfill it at an aid station in a rush. I always put an extra a tube in for my camel bag because I'm really prone to biting the little nozzle bit and then it starts to leak all over me and it's an absolute nightmare. I've bitten about three so far so it's not great. I go through them pretty quickly. But yeah, extra bottles is going to be really helpful. Um, <laughs> I like doing that. An extra head torch and an extra whistle and an extra compass which I still cannot find. So these are just going to be really helpful. You don't know. When you put things in your pack Often with the stuff packs, you can knock things out a little bit. You should be careful as to what you're dropping because you don't want to be dropping rubbish on the trail, but you may knock your head torch out of your pack. It's possible, it could happen, you don't know. You might be running a quick descent and thinking, oh, there's a flat at the bottom, I'm gonna get some food out ready for that. And as you're running down, you knock your head torch out and it's gone. And you just don't know, you don't know for another 20 miles because it's not dark yet. So it's really good to have a spare head torch in your drop bag or a spare whistle so that you can communicate to people because you just don't know what's gonna happen out on the trail. So having that there, also you might break it or you might break your battery or lose your batteries or yeah just there's hundreds of reasons what could go wrong and just having a spare in your drop bag is going to be really helpful. Next up is any medication you might need. I am asthmatic so I always keep a inhaler in my drop bag. It's really helpful. I don't actually run with one because I don't need it that often but you never know if 
it's there, it's there, isn't it? Some pain meds. Now, obviously, some races don't allow these. There's loads of news that's come out recently about UTMB and they're stopping people from using pain meds on their races, but some races do allow them. So if it's a race that does allow it, they're always good to have. The next thing is some electrolytes to go with your water. So you might just be on plain water and you find that you're running low on electrolytes a long way in. You can also have caffeine tablets or electrolyte pills. But these will really help. You might find you're cramping, especially as it gets cold and into the night. These could just be a little bit of a lifesaver. They help with the taste of the water as well. That's another thing, is it just doesn't have to be because you're cramping. Is Maybe you're sick of just tasting water out of a plastic bag. So you want to put some lemon-flavoured electrolytes in. Might brighten your day. Next is food. So obviously you can put extra gels and extra bars in, ones that you like, that you're used to, that you like using. That's really helpful. Um, the other thing is just normal food, like bagels, things that you're not really gonna carry in your pack while you're running, but you could have. Bagels are really good because if you just throw them in a bag and the bag gets absolutely battered about, you can still eat a bagel. It's not something that you need to keep precious. It's like, if you stick a banana in there and it gets absolutely battered, it could be horrible the other end. Whereas a bagel, you're kind of going to eat it whatever condition it's in, aren't you? So that's really good. The other thing is to put something completely different in there, just to change up the palate. You might be sick to death of what you're eating on this race and just can't find anything you like. And if you get back to your drop bag and you're like, ah, oh, there's a chocolate bar in here, you might be quite happy about that. <laughs> the next thing is some warm clothes, like some long socks. These can really help, some nice fluffy warm socks, like you were sitting by the fire at Christmas time, but you're not, you're on an ultra, but you might want some warm socks. Uh, and then a coat. You may want to be at an aid station for a little bit longer, just to take in some more water, let the heart rate go down, take on some more food, but you don't want to get cold. So having a warmer jacket in your drop bag to put on for half an hour could be really, really helpful. Also, your drop bag is going to be transporting to the end and it's usually the first thing you see. You usually can't get to your car that quickly, but your drop bag will be there. So having some really warm, fresh clothes in there is gonna be massive so you don't get cold and horrible at the end of the run. So a nice warm jacket, preferably waterproof, doesn't have to be, um, some jeans maybe, or some sort of jumper, that's really gonna help. It just means that you're gonna feel nice and warm after the ultra, which is what you want really. You've just suffered for possibly 100 miles or something like that. Uh, yeah, so like put a jumper on, kick your feet up. Finally, we have plasters and these are like some steri strip things. These are pretty useful because you might get massive blisters and need to put a plaster on it, that will help. The other thing that might happen is like you might fall and cut a hand or something and to be honest, you're gonna suffer enough on an ultra. So if your hand is bleeding or you've got a cut on it, exposing it to the elements and just suffering with that as well, it's just a pain. So sticking a plaster over it is just gonna help that. If you're suffering enough with your feet and your legs, you don't wanna suffer more just because of a little cut on your hand or something. So having some plasters and some steri strips is just gonna really help. That's all the things that I think you should have in your drop bag to keep it well stocked and hopefully make your ultra go a little bit better. Thank you very much for watching. If there is anything that you like to have in your drop bag that I haven't mentioned, please stick it in the comments below. Remember to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and you can hit the bell for notifications when I upload. I shall see you in the next one. If you do like this type of content and you're interested in what you think I think is essential to carry on an ultra, then you can click this video up here, and YouTube thinks that you'd probably like this video here, so it's your choice.